Uh, hopefully the sound will be working here. It's just amazing. It's nothing like I expected. We are having a great time. There I am. I don't think any of us have had bad on this so far. This is awesome. <laughs> you got one, Mozzie. That's good. You got a ball for you, Mozzie. You do pay the piper at the bottom. <laughs> so, childhood dream number one? Check. <laughs> All right, let's talk about football. My dream was to play in the National Football League. And most of you don't know that I actually play, no. Um, <laughs> no, I did not make it to the National Football League. But I probably got more from that dream and not accomplishing it than I got from any of the ones that I did accomplish. Um, I, I had a coach. I signed up when I was nine years old. I was the, the smallest kid in the league by far. And I had a coach, Jim Graham, who was six foot four. He had played linebacker at Penn State. He was just this hulk of a guy, and he was old school. Okay, I mean really old school. Like he thought the forward pass was a trick play. <laughs> so, and he showed up for practice the first day, and you know he's this big hulking guy. We were all scared to death of him, and he hadn't brought any footballs. How, how are we going to have practice without any footballs? And one of the other kids said, excuse me, coach, but there's no football. And Coach Graham said, right, how many men are on a football field at a time? So he said, 11 on a team, 22. And Coach Graham said, all right, and how many people are touching the football at any given time? Well, one of them. And he said, right, so we're going to work on what those other 21 guys are doing. <laughs> and that's a really good story because it's all about fundamentals. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. You've got to get the fundamentals down because otherwise the fancy stuff isn't going to work. And the other Jim Graham story I have is there was one practice where he just rode me, all practice. Just, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, go back and do it again, you owe me, you're doing push-ups after practice. And when it was all over, one of the other assistant coaches came over and said, yeah, Coach Graham rode you pretty hard, didn't he? I said, yeah. He said, that's a good thing. He said, when you're screwing up and nobody's saying anything to you anymore, that means they gave up. And that's a lesson that stuck with me my whole life, is that... When you, see, when you see yourself doing something badly and nobody's bothering to tell you anymore, that's a very bad place to be. Your critics are your ones telling you they still love you and care. Uh, after Coach Graham, I had another coach, Coach Setliff, and he taught me a lot about the power of enthusiasm. He did this one thing where only for one play at a time, he would put people in at like the most horrifically wrong position for them. Like all the short guys would become receivers, right? It was just, it was just laughable. But we only went in for one play, right? And boy, the other team just never knew what hit them. Because when, you, when you're only doing it for one play and you're just not where you're supposed to be, and freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose, boy, are you going to clean somebody's clock for that one play. <laughs> and, and that kind of enthusiasm was great. And to this day, I am most comfortable on a football field. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, if I'm working a hard problem, people will see me wandering the halls with one of these things. And that's just because, you know, when you do something young enough and you train for it, it just becomes a part of you. And I'm very glad that football was a part of my life. And if I didn't get the dream of playing in the NFL, that's OK. I probably got stuff more valuable. Because looking at what's going on in the NFL, I'm not sure those guys are doing so great right now. <laughs> OK? And so one of the expressions I learned in electronic arts, which I love, which pertains to this, is experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. And I, I think that's absolutely lovely. Um, and the other thing about football is we send our kids out to play football or soccer or swimming or whatever it is, and it's the first example of what I'm going to call a head fake or indirect learning. We actually don't want our kids to learn football. I mean, yeah, it's really nice that I have a wonderful three-point stance and that I know how to do a chop block and all this kind of stuff, but we send our kids out to learn much more important things, teamwork, sportsmanship, perseverance, et cetera, et cetera. And these kinds of head fake learnings are absolutely important. And you should keep your eye out for them, because they're everywhere. All right, a simple one, being an author in the World Book Encyclopedia. When I was a kid, we had the World Book Encyclopedia on the shelf. Uh, for the freshmen, this is paper. <laughs> we used to have these things called books. Um, and after I had become somewhat of an authority on virtual reality, but not like a really important one, so I was at the level of people the World Book would badger. 
they called me up and I wrote an article, and uh, this is Caitlin Kelleher, and uh, there's an article, if you go to your local library where they still have copies of the World Book, look under V for virtual reality, and there it is. And all I have to say is that um, having been selected to be an author in, in the World Book Encyclopedia, I now believe that Wikipedia is a perfectly fine source for your information because <laughs> I know what the quality control is for real encyclopedias. They let me in. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, <laughs> at, at a certain point, you just realize there's some things you're not going to do, so maybe you just want to stand close to the people. And uh, uh, I mean, my God, what a, what a role model for young people. Right? <laughs> I mean, just this is everything you want to be. And what I, what I learned that carried me forward in leadership later is that you know, he wasn't the smartest guy on the ship. I mean, Spock was pretty smart, and McCoy was the doctor, and Scotty was the engineer, and you sort of go, and what skill set did he have to get on this damn thing and run it? And, you know, clearly there's this skill set called leadership. And, you know, whether or not you like the series, there's no doubt that there was a lot to be learned about how to lead people by watching this guy in action. So, and he just had the coolest damn toys. <laughs> right? I mean, my God, he, uh... You know, I, I just thought it was fascinating as a kid that he had this thing and he could, you know, talk to the ship with it. Right? <laughs> you know, I, I just thought that was just spectacular. And of course, now I own one and it's smaller. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, so I got to achieve this dream. Uh, James T. Kirk, his alter ego. Um, uh, William Shatner wrote a book, which I think was actually a pretty cool book. Uh, it was with uh, Chip Walter, who is uh, a, a Pittsburgh-based author who's quite good. And they wrote a book on basically the science of Star Trek, you know, what has come true. And they went around to top places around the country and looked at various things, and they came here to study our virtual reality setup. And uh, so we built a virtual reality for him. It looked something like that. Um, we put it in, put it to red alert. He was a very good sport. It's not like he saw that one coming. <laughs> And it's really cool to meet your boyhood idol. But it's even cooler when he comes to you to see what cool stuff you're doing in your lab. <laughs> and that, was, that was just a great moment. All right, winning stuffed animals. Uh, this may seem mundane to you, but when you're a little kid and you see the big buff guys walking around in the amusement park and they got all these big stuffed animals, Right? And uh, this is my lovely wife. And uh, I have a lot of pictures of stuffed animals I've won. <laughs> That's my dad posing with one that I won. Uh, I've won a lot of these animals. <laughs> There's my dad. He did win that one, to his credit. Um, uh, <laughs> right? And, and this was just a big part of my life and my family's life. But you know, I can hear the cynics. You know, in this age of digitally manipulated things, maybe those bears really aren't in the picture with me, or maybe...